Welcome to a show about things you can see Without going far and a lot of them are free If you thought there was nothing in the old hard land You ought to hit the black op with these fools in a van Look out, they're driving hard Checking out art in their own backyard Randy does the steering so he won't hurl Mike got the map, such a man of the world That's done with the camera, kinda heavy on his shoulder And that giant ball of tape, it's a world record holder Look out, they're driving hard Checking out art in their own backyard Look out, they're driving hard Checking out the world in their own backyard Checking out the world in their own backyard Do they have waterfalls here? Um, why do you ask? You never heard of the Pratt Falls? Dear TV Mailbag, how do I do it? Hi, Don the Camera Guy here, still cracking wise, even after all these days and nights cooped up with two producers, one of whom is never more than a phone call from home. Mom, I did fold all the clothes. They look good. They're holding up fine. She says, don't shoot too much stuff out the window. I guess that'd be directed at you, Don. Now what Mike's mom doesn't seem to grasp is that there's a point to what I'm doing. And that point would be that by showing you the relative normality of the scenery passing by, you'll be all the more amazed when our path crosses a gajillion crosses just down the road. The Miracle Cross Garden began in a way in 1960 when W.C. Rice first found the Lord and in earnest in 1976 when his mother died and he began erecting crosses in her honor and more crosses and more crosses. The neighbors have never taken too well to it but those who track grassroots art and amazing roadside sites always say what W.C. has built is a must-see. These people that's in that boat are, they are in that business to make money. I'm not in that business. I call myself a Jesus man, but I don't force religion on people. A lot of people, you know, force it on you. That's true. I don't do that. Would you have foreseen that it would ever grow this big when no. you started? No. Just no. was a vision that came to no. you? Or? No, I had no idea. It's just like you standing out. What's going to happen in your life tomorrow? Mm, I didn't know nothing but one day. John 316. Well, now the message seems to be that hell is a bad place. Yeah. And you don't want to go there. No. And so you want us to know that so much that you would do all this work. Yeah. Well, see, I didn't know this was going to turn out like that. It's just like God. I don't know where you're going to get back to uh, Kansas or not. I hope you do. I hope you don't get in the car and get killed. But you can't stand in the I know I'm going to get back. Like me sitting here, I know I'm going to get in the house. I don't know it. And that's what you're trying to tell people. Yeah, but the thing about it is, you better be prepared for this head of stuff what's to happen to you. You better be ready to meet Jesus. Wow, the first three crosses put on outside right there. I like that. Some of these are pretty weathered and others look, I saw one that was like October 2nd, 1998. That's this year, that's last week. Yeah, I think he's still working. No, those are old air conditioners, aren't they? It's part of the charm of it, you know? Hell is hot, hot, hot. What's it written on? This is the air conditioner. Yeah. You're getting it, Don. You're getting it. You know, if I just drag you along in this thing long enough, your knees don't buckle on you, your lungs don't give out, your brain don't rot, you'll do okay. You're not preaching to me now, are you? He's got me worried about my driving now. Actually, we're all worried about that, but because of Randy's regurgitory past, we have few other options. So we all piled back into the van, heading towards Montgomery the first capital of the Confederacy and home of those fabulous painting talkers. Moses' name on a piece has been noteworthy for some time, but now daughter Annie is rightfully picking up praise for works of her own. 
Yes, I think most about my childhood and things we growed up around. I started out, I was working, doing housekeeping work and doing motel work. So I started sitting around my father and watching him painting and I started painting for him, around him and he'll tell me, keep on doing, you're doing good, you're doing good. I put paint, I try to paint just like him, but it never did come out like him. And, and how come plywood? Uh, yes, I paint that. I have tried canvas, but I can't, it don't come out like the bowls the best because I use house paint. This paint here I'm doing is one of Daniel. It's a Bible story that he dreaming. He, gonna, he dream about four beasts. So this is me and my three sisters going shopping here. And the one up here is my family fishing, red snappers. <laughs> That's my family riding in the bus. We rocking, we going out of Bothy Row. <laughs> and what's this one here? They're playing cards? Mm -hmm. Playing cards? And, and who's winning? I am. <laughs> <laughs> and this painting here, those are my, this is my father here on his birthday, 4th of July. And all the 11 kids, we giving them a party here. Which one's you? Right there. And there's my brother Jimmy, he's barbecuing, barbecuing. And this is my father here. He drinking his beer. Most folks come in saying, oh, you just getting so good. You're getting so good. Your work is better than your dad. I hate to say that, but it is. <laughs> and it's always signed Annie T. Right. Call order. Annie T. Here. Now Annie needed to get back to working on Daniel and his dreams, which reminds me the boys say tomorrow will be a very busy day and I should strive for a good night's sleep. So why don't you take a look at the map and see where that probably won't occur. So far it's been hard to gush about the food down here. Grits don't make me grin, and as a practicing vegetarian who isn't getting much practice, it seems pretty hopeless. Even when these two pretend to keep my needs in mind. Got you an eggplant for the big barbecue today. An eggplant? Not just an eggplant. An eggplant and onion? An onion. Oh man. There's lunch, baby. Oh no, those are Don's. Put them in the back. Why don't each one of you guys pick a gourd and sit on it? <laughs> is that a southern tradition? There is a tradition down here of good golf on fancy courses where people pay big bucks to chase a little ball. We, on the other hand, carry with us a big ball, the world's largest ball of videotape, in fact, which, as you can see, is soaking up some historical ambiance but only briefly because, as usual, we're already late for an important date in Pittsview. Important enough that it's advertised with all the right signs. Well, two out of three, anyway. That's a hot goober. Yeah, tasty one. Hey, ha. I know nothing about art, but I have become the local expert, and the folk artists are coming out of the woodwork. They call Frank Turner the mayor, not because he won an election, but because of the way his antique shop has evolved into an all-out, balls-to-the-wall folk art emporium. It all began when Buddy Snipes convinced Frank against his better judgment to buy this piece, which he in turn sold to some big city collector. Since then, Butch Anthony, who also has a museum of his own nearby, and painter John Henry Tony have also gotten into the act. This is the type of stuff that, that Buddy Snipes does. Does it on old rusty tin and frames it in sticks. And it, they always, people that he knows, he said, this is Sally, she worked for Mama Sistrunk in Society Hill. He says those people are up on the hill watching to see that their children don't get lost in the cane patch. And this is me. All of my days, I've been making things for when I was small. See, we didn't have anything to play with. So I made things for this, this kid and that kid. And this right here was a piece of wood that I got from uh, down in Hushaboro on the city of Lake. And I see it and I brought it on, so I made a crowd out of it. Everything that I do is something about somebody that I know. 
And so them all little painters over there, like on the little boat, you know? mm -hmm. Them and my sister, the children. You know, like they got children too. I make them too, like them little ones, like them little bit one on him. So this is the cat, catfish. Mm -hmm. And this is a, a dog, a pool, of, a pool of catfish. And so what's this one? This is a mermaid. Mm -hmm. Now mermaids got a lot of those in Alabama? Well, no, I just come up with that. I love the work that I'm doing. I really love it. I really do. So I take nothing makes make somebody. And I really, I really do love it. All right, let me, let me take a look in your hand. Okay. Dre Day. John Henry, he's, uh, he's out there dispensing a little advice. And, uh, yeah, he's r r very religious oriented. Uh, in fact, he said he was glad this was happening and said it probably put him up in the church. This is little Tom William smoking hell off the hinges. Little Tom William is an imaginary character that John Henry blames things on. See, this man here was rich when he went here. When he come out here, he was poor like me. <laughs> is there any good? She's 23 years old, they are hatchet, and that's a peach pipe, dumb a fella, and she got a ribbon tied around here. There's the dying salt right there. He's smoking the pipe. I was 69 when I draw that. He paints a lot of dinosaurs. He said, this is the champion of the dinosaurs. He told me one time he sure would like to have a dinosaur. I said, a dinosaur? And he said, man, you could do some old plowing with a dinosaur. In your hand right there, I see something I ain't never seen. Now, I want you to take a look right there. See right there? That looked like a house, No, it? That looked like, that looked like something in his hand. Now, you see it for yourself. Go out in the woods and I find these trees with weird roots and stuff on them. Yeah, they look like different people. Like that root there looked like Jane Fonda <laughs> plowed that thing up in the wood. That was the blue damn nude there. How about this one? Yeah, that's James Brown. That's a bird nest hairdo. This here's one of them Faberge eggs. You know, one of them fancy eggs. Open it up there and got all. Wow, jewel encrusted. Which is terribly versatile. And he really hadn't found his niche yet. Butch is a highly intelligent fellow. This is one of Butch's puppets. Yeah. That's the Alabama Mamma Jamma smoking a cigarette. And the Alabama Pit Bull. That's one of them Chinese shit zoo dogs. <laughs> I drove it all the way to California and back, 6,000 miles, and got married in it. In it? Yeah, I went through a drive through window in Las Vegas. <laughs> Drove in there for a Big Mac and come out with a Whopper. Can Mike take it for a test, too? Yeah. Let's go for a ride, boys. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, feel the power. You kids, get out of the way! Now driving the Alabama Mamma Jamma car must make a man hungry because no sooner was it parked than the meat eaters among us began pigging out, leaving me as usual to fend for myself. Good thing I do know how to recycle. Good idea, Don. Thank you. Well, thank you. Anyway, as mentioned before, Butch hails from Seal, just seven miles down the road. So we would be remiss not to drive over and see what he's managed to curate in his own Alabama Museum of Wonder. Well, it's 25 cents again, and now only a dollar. No group discount. That's the famous turnip root that got it all started. It was about that big around and it swiveled up to that big. You got two eyes, a nose, and a mouth. All this stuff's rare, isn't it? Yeah. That Milamo bird, it lives way down in the swamps in Alabama. They fly way up in the air and fold his wings up, and he drops down, sticks his beak in the mud, and then he whistles Dixie out his butt, and you can hear it for a mile or more. Here's some nose hair from the Loch Ness Monster. <laughs> hey, Don, look. World's largest gallstone. Removed, not passed, actually. Like Mikey in seventh grade. That's right. <laughs> Removed, not passed. 
Would you like to have the world's largest ball of videotape in here? Yeah, right next to the gallstone. I clean Elvis's pelvis off there. And we'll put it right there. Right next to, between the gallstone and Don King's illegitimate son. <laughs> I think the ball would be happy here. What do you think? You, you got a museum. You, you'd understand these things. That's a heap of tape. I figure that thing ought to be worth about $3. So do you think people would flock to your museum if you had this? They probably would. OK, so what's it worth now? $3.50? Yeah. <laughs> they could have haggled all night, but someone remembered we do have Georgia on our minds. Just over the line near Buena Vista, and that is how they say it to gawk at Pasaquan. Seems one Eddie Owens Martin, with his initials to guide him, spent decades transforming the family farm into a vast, colorful complex. It's big, it's bold, it should just about kill your shoulder. But this is all you gotta do today. This and tote our bags into the next hotel. Lord Almighty. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. This was back in the 1930s that Eddie came down with a, what the family thought was a pneumonia. But he said that he was bedridden, running, uh, it was an enormously high fever, and uh, he died. He said that this giant appeared to him, uh, had this long beard that was uh, braided, matted, it, you know, came up into upswept hair. And this image gave him a choice about living or dying and told Eddie, well, if you go back, you'll create something new and you'll call it Pasaquan. And Eddie took a look at this experience as, uh, as a cleansing and a purification to get rid of all the evil that he'd been through in his life. The home of the own is what I call this. Yeah, home of the own. <laughs> Eddie, Eddie built all of this through visions that he had uh, pretty much by himself. Eddie was out here uh, with a shovel, a wheelbarrow. I think he eventually developed like a portable type cement mixer. He used trash can lids, Tupperware dishes, pots, pans, hubcaps, anything that would serve as a mold. Uh, he started this work when he was 49 years old. Uh, trial and error, he had a sixth grade education. He didn't know anything about line or form. Uh, managed to, to cover a good four acres uh, in 30 years. People that come out here and they think, well, you know, this guy's dropped a lot of acid. This is in the 1960s. It's like a drug-related kind of a thing. And, uh, associate this with communes or cults, which it isn't. I um, mean, this is strictly, again, this is one man's interpretation of, of life and his priorities and the way that he could see things. He had these uh, cosmic mirrors that he drew out, and he constantly warned people uh, that you don't come out here and have evil thoughts or think bad things, and certainly if you took something, then it would come back on you. This back door, this is Eddie's hanging out back porch door and the birthday parties, and as far as the family coming over, celebrating different events, uh, this is where they socialized. This is the dance pit that he used for ritual dancing. Uh, the type of dance that he did, to me, looked, it was more like a, a Tai Chi. Everything out here has a meaning. This is multicultural, primitive civilizations. Great hand railings. Uh, wow. Snakes out here are, they, they represent good luck, that much we do know. These are what they call these are black rat snakes, live up in the trees. And Eddie would like to take a radio, and he'd set a radio up in the limbs and create the vibration to get the snakes to come out. This is a pretty good place to stand because you can look around and see just you know, in every direction things that he was doing, and they're different. I mean, there are the discs there, there's the the mask things here, there's the, the tin work and what almost looks like a steamer ship or something in terms of the way that, that roof is built. Eddie was adamant about, he didn't call this uh, artwork. He said this is a lifetime of hard work. People were asking him, you know, well, you know, why are you doing this and where did you learn this? And obviously it's more convenient to say, well, back in uh, the 1940s when I was in New York, I was called up for the draft. Uh, I was a merchant seaman. I traveled to India, Burma. That's where I learned all this. Now, if he would have said, uh, I'm, I'm sanctum, the first Pasaquanian, and I'm having visions. <laughs> he knew how to survive. <laughs> he knew how to survive. That's right. 
Among other things, Eddie did some fortune telling out here, and while I'm no sayer of sooth, I do know they can't finish this show without me. So I predict very shortly Randy will do some very bad backing. They said it would be a long drive, but Rome? All I know is it wasn't built in a day, and when you're here, you should do as those who are here are doing. Though I don't see anyone else doing this. Get warmed up for Howard Finster. I heard of the gold of Rome, but not the diamond. How does that t-shirt feel, Don? I tell you, it's all cotton, first of all, isn't it? I woke up this morning, I was so sad, this is our last day. I grew a new pimple right there. Oh, oh yeah. Let me see. I'm gonna grow a goiter. How'd you feel? Nothing like some catch on a crisp autumnal Sunday morning to get you ready for the drive on over to Somerville to bask in the glow of Howard Finster's Paradise Gardens. With his album covers and posters, museum pieces, and big time TV appearances, this Baptist preacher is pretty much the chairman of the board when it comes to visionary art. And because these producers are more lucky than they are good, it appears Howard will be making his once a week visit to the gardens the same time we are. We've married people in this um, garden. We've had people come up here to get remarried in the garden. Uh, and he used to preach uh, on a regular basis. Give me that old time religion. I've had lots, of, quite a few visions ever since I was three years old. And when I had this vision, it come to me. And my 80 years pastor in 10 different churches, I never had no such a vision as this. Howard's 81 years old, and um, he's quite active, I think, for his age. He still paints every day. He has a just a really hard work ethic. Somehow, Father. I was raised up fooling with junk. I always see what I could do with junk and what I could make out of it. And I just had more junk than anything else, and finally junk started bringing a little money. I got to start dealing in junk, and then I got to thinking about all the different kind of displays and museum that people had. Why didn't somebody have a museum of the invention of mankind? And I named the garden uh, Plant Farm Museum. My intentions was to, to raise every kind of edible fruit that you could think of from all over the world. And I started that in addition with uh, the items like old rings and all kinds of old jewelry that people would break or get in bad shape, they'd bring it and give it to me, and I got to molding it in. And I just fill that garden up with all kinds of things, like invention of mankind. I seen him build a place. See, I was here when he built all this. This glass house here is when he first started, too, and he built this one over here. That's made out of bottles, Coke bottles. Is that a spark, really big spark plug? Well, you're not working on my car, but... Look at that, isn't it beautiful? Love makes life, hate makes death. Your bad habits starts by you. Well, this whole area is, is reclaimed swampland. And there's little brooks and little creeks. Now we've got one in between, two above ground, that doesn't know if it's gonna be above ground or over ground yet. I call it the mud hole, you wanna be careful. Um, and not fall into it. The last person that fell into it was Carrie in the tripod. Mike, get the tripod, will you? <laughs> I've run into a lot of, a lot of things in my life that a lot of people need to hear because they need to laugh, laugh as well as I do. They need to see things as well as I see them. And my life 
How can it be a help to anybody unless they see something about my life, what's happening in my life? This is his uh, work over the last 27 years. And um, hopefully y'all will get so entranced with the artwork that you'll forget all about the snakes. Now maybe I'd be more worried about snakes if I hadn't been spending so much time with weasels. And after all, one man's swamp is another man's paradise. Once again, this would be Don the Camera Guy signing off. I, I liked Elvis. I liked his uh, humbleness. And I liked his personality. I never did get to go to one of his shows. And one day down in my garden, I stooped over working the flowers. And somebody walked up behind me, and I just uh, knew they did. And I just turned and looked up like that. And I seen his shirt collar plumb down to his shoes, and he was standing behind me. And I didn't know what to say or even what to do because I never had the, the dead standing behind me like that before. And while I was studying about what to say or what to do, finally I asked him on my back, turned to him, I said, how about staying a while with me? He said, Howard, I'm on a tight schedule. <laughs> you think we can manage to miss the mud hole? Oh, yes. You look like intelligent human beings. Oh, I hope you were rolling when she said that. Were you rolling when she said that? It must be the light, though. No.